Hey guys, it's Mrs. Olenichek, and today we're going to talk about the cell membrane. Um, so the cell membrane is basically the barrier or what keeps the inside of the cell separate from the outside of the cell. Um, it's going to be the boundary between the external or outside environment and the internal inside environment. And it needs to be able to control what goes in and out. And so certain things that need to get into a cell are going to be things like food. So that's sugars, proteins, fats, salts. Um, you also need oxygen and water to get into a cell. Um, to get out of the cell, you're going to need things like waste products that are going to be produced by the cell. Those can be things like ammonia, certain salts, carbon dioxide, and water, um, and products. So cells make proteins for export to other cells or to other environments, um, and so you need to be able to get those out. And so the cell membrane's job is to kind of maintain a stable internal environment, um, but also to transport materials in and out. When we talk about the structure of the cell membrane, we use something called the fluid mosaic model, um, which is basically a bunch of proteins floating in a sea of phospholipids. Um, so phospholipids are these really cool structures um, that are made up of a phosphate head and a lipid tail, um, and they're going to form a double layer. We call it a bilayer. Um, so this phosphate head, and there's your two fatty acid lipid tails. So here's your phosphate, here's your lipid or fatty acid tails. Um, and the phosphate head is going to be hydrophilic. It's going to be attracted to water because it's polar. Remember, like attracts to like, so your polar phosphate head is going to be attracted to water. Um, and your tails, those lipid or fatty acid tails are going to be hydrophobic because they're nonpolar, so they're going to be repelled or afraid of water. Um, and when you put those all together in a watery environment, which is what your cells have on the outside and on the inside, what they do is form this bilayer, this kind of lipid sandwich. So you've got your phosphate heads all facing out towards either the inside of the cell or the outside of the cell where it's watery. Um, but then the lipid tails are all going to face in because they don't want to be near the water. And so they form this kind of barrier, this kind of oil layer that prevents materials from moving easily back and forth. Um, so if we look at it here, it's another drawing. Um, you have this bilayer, the double layer of hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. Um, you've got your phospholipid here with your hydrophilic head and your hydrophobic tails. Um, so you should make sure that you kind of understand the different parts of this phospholipid bilayer. We also have a bunch of proteins that are going to be embedded in the membrane or sometimes they're just there on the top of the membrane. Um, and so here are some different types. So you have your transporter, your channel proteins. Um, you have your enzymes, and they do what enzymes do. They help reactions happen, and oftentimes you'll find a bunch of enzymes that work together, all embedded in a membrane in a certain area. Um, you have receptors that are going to receive signals from the outside and then send messages to the inside of the cell. Oops, sorry. Um, and then you have um, the cell surface markers. Um, and they're going to basically be ID cards for the cell. You also have proteins that work on adhesions. They connect or join cells together and then attachment. Um, so they attach to the cytoskeleton or the extracellular matrix. Um, so here's a quick check-in. See if you can figure out what structure X represents without looking at your notes. So that's going to be that phospholipid, and then these are proteins. So if you wrote phospholipid for X, then you got that right. Um, and this is going to be what we call an integral protein because it goes all the way through. 
And this would be what we call a peripheral protein because it's just on the periphery or so it doesn't go all the way through the layer. It's just hanging out right here. So let's get to cell membrane function. What's the main function of the cell membrane? Well, it controls what enters and leaves the cell. <laughs> um, and its major job is to control what comes in and out and maintain homeostasis. So maintain a balance in the cell. Um, so in order to cross the cell membrane, you've got to get through this, this layer, right? Um, and some molecules are going to be able to just go through that directly. They have to be really small and nonpolar in order to do that, um, right? Because they need to be able to fit through here, and they need to be able to get through this nonpolar layer. Um, and so really that's only going to be things like lipids or certain gases. Um, like oxygen and carbon dioxide can move pretty readily through that um, fossil lipid bilayer. Um, but really, the other stuff, the sugars, the amino acids, even water and salts and waste products are going to have a really hard time getting through that fossil lipid bilayer um, because they're either too big or they're polar. And so once they hit that lipid layer, they're going to get repelled. Um, so in order to take care of that issue, we have membrane channels. So these are special proteins um, that act like doors through the membrane, so they're going to allow materials to pass through that layer. Um, and they're going to be really specific, so they only allow certain materials in or out of the cell. Um, so you have a special water channel, a salt channel, specific sugar channels, um, and so this particular uh, membrane channel is only going to allow certain types of sugars through, whereas this one will only allow a certain type of amino acid. And they're going to even be specific to the particular amino acid many times. Um, you have things called aquaporins that are channels that are specific for water. Um, and then you have ones that will let certain salts through and waste products through. Um, What's also kind of interesting is that cells can make new channels as their needs change. So if it's a cell that needs to be able to transport a lot of water into the cell or out of the cell, then they'll add more aquaporin proteins to the cell membrane. All right, so transport, there's two types. There's active and passive. So we'll start with passive transport. Big ideas is there's no energy required. Um, you're always moving from high concentration to low concentration. So we say there's a concentration gradient. You can think of it kind of like a hill. Um, with passive transport, you're rolling down the hill, and that doesn't require any in, like extra energy to do it. Once it starts, it's just going to move on its own. Um, so we say substances are moving down the concentration gradient because they're going from a place where there's a high concentration, so there's a lot of whatever it is to an area of lower concentration. Um, and there's three basic types that we talk about. There's diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. So diffusion is just movement from high concentration to low concentration. So you can see in that little animation, um, those molecules are spreading out to fill the space. Um, and it's passive, and there's no energy required. If we're looking at the diffusion of water, so where water is going to move from where there's a higher concentration of water to a lower concentration of water, that's going to be osmosis. Um, so it's kind of important to note, like in this diagram, if we were looking at the green dots, that's, let's just call that stuff. Um, if you're looking just at the green dots, there's less stuff on this side and more stuff on that side. And so if the green molecules could move, they would move from high to low concentration. However, the water molecules, we say that there's a higher concentration of water molecules over here because there's less stuff, so there's more water, and a low wa concentration of water over here because there's more stuff and less water. And so if the water can move, the water is going to move from here to here, and that would be osmosis, which is just the diffusion of water. Um, so diffusion is the movement of solutes, so the stuff, from an area of high concentration of solute or stuff 
to an area of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So remember, semi-permeable, the cell membrane only lets certain things through. So not everything can get through, so it's partially or semi-permeable. Sometimes we'll call that selectively permeable because it selects what can get through. Um, but just remember, it's not letting everything through, so that's why it's semi-permeable. Um, and this process of diffusion, the movement of that stuff from high to low, is going to continue until we reach something called equilibrium. Um, so equilibrium sounds kind of like equal. It means that you have equal concentrations of stuff on the inside and the outside. So here you start off with a high concentration of stuff here and a low concentration of stuff here. Um, over time you have that stuff moving through that selectively permeable membrane um, until you have equal quantities on both sides. And we say this is simple diffusion because these are your small nonpolar molecules and they're able to pass through the cell membrane they don't need any special doors, and so they're going to keep doing that until there's a balance overall. Um, and there still is going to be some movement back and forth, but equilibrium is where you have like equal quantities, so there's no net movement back and forth. Facilitated diffusion is where you get some help. So facilitate is to help, um, and here you're moving from high to low concentration, but you're using a channel or a specialized protein door. So if you look at this example, um, which way is the sugar going to move? Go ahead, test yourself. So yeah, hopefully you said it was going to move into the cell, so it's going to go from where there's a high concentration outside to a lower concentration inside, and it's going to continue to do that till it reaches equilibrium. So you're moving from high to low concentration. And it's facilitated because it had to go through a channel, a protein channel. Um, so here we go. The facilitated diffusion is just diffusion through a protein channel. It's going to be necessary for charged or larger molecules. So anything that can't go directly through the cell membrane is going to need to use some channels. Um, because you're still going from high to low concentration, there's no energy required. So because you're going down the concentration gradient, even if you're using a carrier protein or a channel protein, it still is passive transport because there's no energy. Osmosis is another one. This is your diffusion of water. Um, and so again, you're moving from high to low concentration, but what's going to be moving is going to be the water. So in this, this semi-permeable membrane isn't going to let the sugar molecules through because they're going to be too big to fit through there, um, but it is going to let the water molecules. And so in this case, the water is going to move from where there's a lot of water to where there's less water. Um, and that just continues to happen, again, until equilibrium, equilibrium is reached. Um, so osmosis is the diffusion of water from high concentration to low concentration of water. Um, sometimes you'll see these kind of setups drawn. Um, and so here you have your selectively permeable membrane. The assumption is that the the stuff, whatever it is, can't get through that, but the water can. So the water is going to move towards where there's less water but more stuff um, and kind of fill up that space. Whenever you're looking at questions like this, try to figure out, like, okay, where's there more stuff, which means there's less water and less stuff or more water, and then figure out what you're asked about. So if they ask about which direction is the water going to move, then you look to where there's more water and less water. If they ask about the stuff, then you look to where there's more stuff and less stuff. All right, some vocabulary before we go any further. We've got hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. So hypertonic is where you have a high concentration of stuff, which is low water. Hypo is low stuff, high water, and ISO is going to be equal concentrations. So when you look at real cells, this kind of idea of the environment is going to be really important. So you've got hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic, and that's going to have really different effects on different types of cells. So you can look at animal cells and plant cells. So we're going to use red blood cells as our example. 
for the animal cells, and these are just generalized plant cells. Here we've got a great gift from the amoeba sisters. So for animal cells, if you put them in a hypotonic environment, you're going to have all of this water moving in and they're going to start swelling. Um, here, isotonic is where it's equal. Um, and here, because there's it's hyper, so there's more stuff outside, the water is going to move out to try to balance it out and the cells are going to shrink. Um, next we have active transport, um, and this is where cell units move from low concentration to high concentration. Um, so going against the concentration gradient, and that is going to require some energy. Um, so you're going to use some ATP to kind of pump that stuff across. Um, and then you have bulk transport, um, and this is where you're trying to get big stuff into or out of the cell. Um, and so you have endocytosis, which is where you're bringing it into the cell. And two examples of that are phagocytosis and pinocytosis. And then exocytosis is where you're trying to get stuff to exit the cell. So that would be um, that. So here's an example of phagocytosis. Um, this is an amoeba in the diagram. Um, so you'll notice like... It comes, it surrounds the particle, um, and then you have lysosomes fusing with this new vacuole, and they can digest that and absorb the nutrients. Um, you also see this in white blood cells. So here you see a white blood cell tracking or chasing down some bacteria, and then it's going to eventually, the, there you go, it absorbs it. Um, I'll put a link to a YouTube video of this too, but you can just put in white blood cell phagocytosis to see a really cool video of that. Um, pinocytosis is cell drinking, so this is just where you're bringing in water, fluids, and then exocytosis. This is how cells get rid of large quantities of waste. Um, so notice that you've got like those vesicles and they're merging with your cell membrane. Um, and that's how you get rid of all that stuff. Um, so that's about it for today. If you have any questions, remember to write them down, and we'll be going over this stuff in class, too. All right. Bye.